Hi, Sandy Mackey here with a little bit of heavy breathing just before midnight. I'm falling into one of the things that I know kind of punks me out before I do a heavy breathing. I've been trying to think of what to talk about today and a lot of ideas run through my mind and it seems like I get the best ideas when I'm driving around in my car, which is probably not surprising seeing as how I spend a lot of time driving around in my car. Anyway, when I'm driving around in my car, I still don't have the right app on my phone to be able to record, which I think I'm going to, and then we'll have heavy breathing in the middle of the day driving around in my car, which will come as a result of that time that I spend with myself, just thinking thoughts. And an interesting thing has been happening when I've been riding around in my car. Sometimes I have my um, headset in so that I can talk on the phone. And a lot of the time when I'm not even talking on the phone, I leave the earbuds in. And I think I almost do it because it's calming. When there's not so much coming from outside, then I get to hear my thoughts a little bit more than if I'm trying to listen to the radio or pay attention to traffic or something like that. It's almost that sense of being underwater. If you've ever been underwater and thought to yourself, or even if your ears were just underwater, the things you think just become clearer as you listen to yourself. Well, as I've been trying to figure out what to talk about today, I haven't been listening to those thoughts that I've been having. I've been trying to have great profound thoughts so that I can have a great profound moment and conversation when some of the greatest, most profound moments come out of the blue, unscripted and unplanned. Well, then it came time for me to sit down and actually hit record, and I was feeling the need for a little bit of help. So I picked up two different books off my bookshelf. One is The Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu, and the other is The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. And I figured I would just open these and I would see what they had to say and figure out how that fit into my life today. Because there's a reason I think I picked them off the shelf. So in this version of the Tao Te Ching, there's an introduction and I'd like to read you just a little section of that. Tao means path. For Lao Tzu, it signifies not just any path, but the specific path to living in concordance with the unity of the universe. According to Lao Tzu, it is the nature of nature to issue from an inextricable relationship of every part to the whole. To live life in accord with the Tao is to be in harmony with all others, with the environment, and with one's self. It is to live in synchronicity with processes and to be completely authentic, sincere, natural, and innocent. The word integrity embraces all these characteristics. Tao also implies the inexhaustible greatness and wonderfulness of the universe and every part of it. All these propositions provide what modern science would call a theory of the nature of the universe. So that's an interesting statement. The one that sticks with me the most is to live life in accord with the Tao is to be in harmony with all others, with the environment, and with oneself. As much as I try to do that, when I start trying to orchestrate what it is that I'm going to talk about, I get further away from that and not close enough to it. I think when I go for a walk and I have a meditation on, and I'm just listening to the words and sometimes the background music, I can feel in that moment that all is right with the world and that I am absolutely perfect where I am, and my life is perfect, and there's all of this perfection that's around me. And then as I mentioned the other day, I toggle that switch, and then it becomes about planning for the future and trying to orchestrate something so that I can strategize my way into the next big thing. And yet, I have to remember that in every moment, everything is perfect. And living, as the Tao says, with integrity and embracing all of these characteristics, authentic, sincere, natural, and innocent, that's when the magic happens. Notice what words aren't in there. 
There's a whole lot. You can probably start thinking about many. The words that are here, authentic, sincere, natural, innocent, to be in harmony with others, with the environment, and with oneself. What would it take to even practice that for 24 hours? To just be in harmony with yourself for 24 hours and then allow that to translate into harmony with the environment and harmony with others. That's a pretty powerful place to be and somewhere that I think we sometimes find ourselves in and then we forget because we're trying to do or be or have or change or something when it's really really simple. So I mentioned the other book that I picked up was The Science of Getting Rich. And I suppose I've chosen these two because they're comforting to me somehow. I've read these both at points in my life where they've made a profound impact and they've really given me something to think about and contemplate. And then it was in the moments that I wasn't reading the books or in the study of it where the realization of exactly what they said came through. And I think it's okay when we're not quite sure where to go or what direction we're turning to fall back on things that have brought us some of that clarity in the past. But at any point where we find ourselves, we don't find the same point of clarity that we had before. If I were to try to find the points of clarity that I had last October when I had a week of absolute profound bliss, I can't go back to that moment of clarity. I see around it. I see the person that I was, I see the thoughts that I was having, but I can't actually get back to there. And on some level that disappoints me, but that would be what the Tao is reminding me. I have to live in harmony with myself where I am now, and where I was then, and the awareness that I had in those moments. I haven't lost that awareness, it's just not in my moment of awareness right now. And I think we can illustrate that in a lot of different ways in our lives. We can sometimes approach a situation and know that we know something. And we can try to look at it from that point of knowing. But as soon as we've tried to look at that point of knowing, we can't see it anymore. And that's what verse 1 of the Tao shares. So I'll just share this with you as well. It's um, in this particular book translated as Transcending. The Tao that can be told is not the universal Tao. The name that can be named is not the universal name. In the infancy of the universe, there were no names. Naming fragments, naming fragments the mysteries of life into 10,000 things and their manifestations. Yet mysteries and manifestations spring from the same source, the great integrity, which is the mystery within manifestation, the manifestation within mystery, the naming of the unnamed, and the unnaming of the name. When these, interpretation, when these interpenetrations are in full attendance, we will pass the gates of naming notions in our journey toward transcendence. That's a whole lot of words to say that when we try to define something or when we try to put our awareness back in a point of clarity where we were before, we're just going to end up more confused than we were in the first place. So we should just be where we are and observe what we observe and let it be exactly that. Right? I think so. So let's move over to the science of getting rich because there's also a little bit in here that I'd like to share. So the science of getting rich does deal with the process of getting rich in the way that Wallace Waddles defined it. And I'd like to read this section for you. No one is prevented from getting rich by lack of capital. True, as you get capital, the increase becomes more easy and rapid. But one who has capital is already rich and does not need to consider how to become so. No matter how poor you may be, if you begin to do things in the certain way, you will begin to get rich and you will begin to have capital. The getting of capital is a part of the process of getting rich, and it is a part of the result which invariably follows the doing of things in a certain way. 
You may be the poorest man on the continent and be deeply in debt. You may have neither friends, influence, nor resources. But if you begin to do things in this way, you must infallibly begin to get rich. For like causes must produce like effects. If you have no capital, you can get capital. If you are in the wrong business, you can get into the right business. If you are in the wrong location, you can go to the right location. And you can do so by beginning in your present business and in your present location to do things in a certain way which causes success. So I ask you what the certain way in this refers to. Is the certain way the doing of things in a certain way? The being of things in a certain way? Or is it the observance of things in the universe, being in unity with others, with the environment, and with ourselves? And is there more in common with the science of getting rich and the Tao than it would first appear? Ponder that until next time.